one of the best of the new world's ideas is the national park idea, reserving the finest scenic wonders for all mankind. Unique in your park system are the amazing canyons of the Yampa and Green Rivers. Dinosaur National Monument has protected them for years. Today, the western states need water and power, and some insist that Utah's share come from two dams that would destroy dinosaur. Conservationists all over America, including top engineers, know that these needs can be met outside of dinosaur without using up a rare treasure that can never be replaced, a treasure too few know about. Crossing the bridge on Highway 40 at Jensen, Utah, you'd think the Green River led a pretty dull life. Here, the big old river meanders lazily down a wide desert valley. There's not the slightest hint that just a few miles to the north, this quiet river has cut during the past 90 million years a canyon wonderland unequaled anywhere. If you stick to the main road, you'll never know about the canyons of the Green River and the Yampa, but they're there all right, and they're yours. They're yours because they're part of your national park system. To get a peek at your property, you've got to leave the highway and explore some primitive roads. These will take you to the edge for a quick look. But to know it, and this applies to all our national park areas, to really know it, you must get out of your car, your truck, or your bus, and hit the trail. The trail in this area is unique. There's no other trail like it in any other park. The trail is the rivers, the Yampa, and the Green. Sierra Club members since 1892 have been exploring, enjoying, and protecting your scenic lands. A handful of them have their own folding boats, such as the one being put together now for a trial run down the river. But you don't have to know how to assemble or operate one of these to enjoy this place. On the king-size pontoons we use, you can lend an oar if you want to, or let a boatman row while you relax. Most of this group is starting out on one of a series of river trips the Sierra Club organizes in San Francisco for people all over the country on a non-profit basis. These are trips for anyone who can walk 100 yards and sleep outdoors, and who can spend an extra $5 a day for a vacation experience of a lifetime. Let's join this group. They're people of all ages, from 77 down to four, and discover for ourselves, along with them, this Wilderness River Trail. Let's find out what happens when a river decides to cut a path directly through the center of a mountain range. Let's see what was accomplished from 90 million years of work, and whether it was worth it. That's a good question. Was it worth it? There are a few people around who don't think it was. Nature took almost a million centuries to uncover this beauty, this land you own. But a few men would like to cover it up again while you watch. They like to pour concrete in the canyons and flood every single mile of surging river you're going to look at. Their dams would drown the best of it, inundate forever every welcoming beach Every campsite, every strange sign left by the prehistoric Indians who lived amid these geological wonders, drowned the most important living space for today's wildlife. All these things would vanish forever under water and silt. Sure, man has a need for water and power. He also has a spiritual need for the beauty of natural things. Should he then, sacrifice beauty that can never be restored or replaced for water and power that can be developed in many other places. 
without violating your national park system. As we ride the wilderness trail through your property, think about your choice. Destroy this place or cherish the wonder of it. Lazy, sunny days make you thirsty? Try a cupful of Yampa Suds. This Park Service biologist knows what he's doing. Or you can wait for the next clear spring. River glides by Steamboat Rock at Echo Park, one of the most wonderful sights in all the world. The proposed Echo Park Dam would leave just the tip above water. Thank you. 
wash up the dishes or take a lazy siesta in the friendly shade of a cool cottonwood grove. Others decide to explore. In the Green River Canyon country, there are hundreds of caves carved by the wind and water. And the prehistoric Indians who came here used them as living places. There are Indian relics too, arrowheads, bits of pottery, which we leave just where we find them for someone else to wander at. and teepee poles, just where the Indians laid them, when, for some strange reason, they left this place. Above the caves, countless fossils can be seen among the rocks. Many fossils predate the great dinosaurs which roamed here before the mountains rose. The Indians used canyon walls as their canvas and carved into the rock these strange petroglyphs. What they mean, no one has yet been able to decipher. And there must be hundreds still undiscovered, hidden away in the side canyons. not devoid of beauty, as we see when we look at it closely. While some of us explore, others fish. But it's getting late and time to set up camp. So with the help of Dad, Two boys unpack the duffel and get everything in order so they can hop in after the evening get together around the campfire.
Each duffel bag contains about 30 pounds of home for a week on the river. ground sheet is a bedroom floor when the weather's dry, and a roof over the sleeping bags if it should rain. For a first-class orthopedic mattress, try the ground. Or you can be soft and bring an air mattress. is a particularly exciting one, for today is the big day on the river, the day of really rough water, or white water, an experienced boatman would call it, and it's late spring, and the trip is different from what we'd have in summer. Now, the water is high. The river covers the rocks deeper. It also covers them a lot faster. big waves ahead, but we know that with these boats and these boatmen, we'll get through easily and safely. We may get splashed, but just hang on and have fun. You'll dry off quickly in this arid country. Or if you're scared, you can walk around any of the rapids, or take one or two day trips with no fast water at all. But make up your mind, come along or walk around. Uh-oh, change your mind, lady? All set now? Okay, hang on and let's go.
How's that for excitement? Would you rather have walked around? Whatever you might prefer, don't you find that the key to this place, the mood of it, is the river? What would it be like without that here? Six happy days and 86 beautiful, carefree miles can end swiftly. As you step ashore, chances are you'll wish you could go right back and start over. You remember the side canyons you didn't have time to explore, the wooded beaches you didn't camp on, in this place that leaves you wanting more. Yes. It was fun letting the river carry us along, or for some of us to carry the river along, which these people are putting back under the watchful and amused eye of Riverman Bus Hatch. You can see how reluctant these people are to part with the river. This river is what counts, this living river. But how long will it live? How long will you let it live? Congress must move forward. Sometimes it'll march upright with sound development. Sometimes it'll stumble and make a slum. Certainly we can ask progress to walk around and not through our garden, America's park lands. Here, north of Dinosaur, progress stumbled a little, but there was no garden to spoil. Similar dam sites above and below Dinosaur can provide Utah with more water storage and more kilowatts than can be obtained by spoiling Dinosaur National Monument with dams and reservoirs. We can have both if we approach the problem with open minds. Water and power and a unique unspoiled scenic asset for Utah and all the rest of the country too. All of us who must pay the piper cannot let a few people call the tune a dirge for dinosaur. The decision rests with Congress your Congress, which has always staunchly guarded your national park system. No, it isn't progress to destroy these beautiful canyons of the Yampa and Green with reservoirs that can be placed elsewhere whenever the real need for them arises. Of course, if they build their dams here, you could roar past the tops of these cliffs through a hundred miles of reservoir in a power boat, just as you can do in hundreds of other reservoirs all over the country. But so little to gain and so much to lose. Take another look. Yes, take a good look at this wilderness river country of yours. 2,000 feet straight down from Harper's Corner into the heart of it. Remembering what it was like when you were down there looking straight up, feeling the surge of the river as it carried you along. Remember too, that our great national park system isn't an accident. Men worked for it, saved it from exploitation, from the people who think that men can live by bread alone. Men with vision saved these places for us, gave us the opportunity of being inspired and thrilled and renewed by them. And we are just the first of the people who have thrilled to this place. Americans through the ages will learn of it, will want to see it and see it again if we don't allow it to be flooded by reservoirs. Yes, 
take a good look, and then come back and think about this miracle of the earth. And think about your kids, too. Shall we let man undo this miracle? Or shall we leave for your children and theirs this friendly canyon country and its singing wilderness rivers?